I mean, it's just about sex, really. I think it's really just all about sex. This Mithra, Pyrrha, whatever. I mean, like, the way that the characters are designed is based on the Xenoblade video game. That's how they came out originally. It's like, it, uh, there should be no controversy about this, but the fact that people are talking about the sexualization of them, or their boobs are only a certain size, or it's misrepresenting whatever. The point is, it's destroying the children. These children, I mean, kids look are on the internet all the time, and this sets the narrative, how people respond to everything. So then they're projecting about, should I respond to this this way? Should, do I need to, like, look at myself and not like myself? So, any, so boys are said, uh, being told, like, you know, don't like boobs. Like, it's bad, it's bad to like boobs. Like, you're a problem if you're focused on the boobs of anything. And so then they're wrong, they feel wrong for how they feel naturally all the time. That they're just, they're just wrong for feeling that way. And then girls who have, who are attractive and, you know, and realize that men are attracted to them, they feel like that's bad. And then it's all just bad and then nobody's exploring anything. Exploratory play is gone from the younger generation and they're all just emotionally sexually repressed and then there are some men who externalize that in really destructive ways and that's what everybody's talking about that's what second wave feminism is talking about these like sexually repressed destructive men who hurt people but they are the minority because a lot of people are just sexually repressed and just hurting each other in these really you know clear and present mob like external ways you're hurting people is just sort of the replacement for this repression that they're feeling and it's this you know absconding from responsibility and just you know if i perform a victimhood i get the same sort of sexual rush as actually fucking someone but i can't fuck someone because it's bad and mommy and daddy are watching and they're just constantly <laughs> acting like there's some authority figure in the room who is watching their every move then they're just editing and respond to and i'm gonna get in trouble but then i call somebody out and then mommy will love me if i call somebody out who's worse than me and then i'll be relatively better and it's just just disgusting it's hell it's prison and it's performed constantly in our pockets it's just there and, and grat gratifying me look how virtuous i am and look how many people that i've torn down today i've covered up see see the hypocrisy that i fear in my own self i'm I'm, it, it absolves me uh, of that hypocrisy that I can't communicate because, because I've, 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 I pointed out somebody else's hypocrisy, so I don't have to face the pain that's inherent in, in, in my hypocrisy. No, it's just, it's disgusting. And, it, and it's prison. I mean, we're all caught in this just like societal uh, pinball game where everybody's bouncing uh, offense off each other and weaponizing it in pain. It's just the pain Olympics constantly. It is the most boring sport. It is all so tiresome. And I think, you know, a lot of people could benefit by ch checking out of it, not engaging in it. I think I think we need to be having conversations that reference it, but not be the being the ones engaging in it. And you know, who really who really cares about what we kick? So what can you do? You know, people find such currency in 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 being inauthentic and 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 wielding it against people and just yeah, you know. Uh, eliminating any responsibility from their laps by being anonymous and I people think that you know that anonymous uh, you know energy is power and they suckle on it like sucking from a stone it's disgusting and we and we validate it and that's the thing corporations are now bowing to this energy so you can't say you can't say just ignore it because corporations are bowing to it so it's how do you not participate in it but still comment on it and still call it out as the enemy because it is the enemy this this you know offense culture this critical theory all the time constantly just tearing everything down and not building anything and just being this you know and not like objective criticism that's helpful like you should only take criticism from people who have your best interests in hearts and these people don't have your best interests in hearts because they're looking for a chink in the armor constantly but yet they're criticizing constantly and it's it's unrealistic that humanity can survive this like to be perfectly honest it's not tenable like it's going to we're going to eat ourselves like a, a self-consuming parasite i mean that's what we most resemble right now and it's and it's horrendous i can't like say it enough how terrible it is that we just tear down leaders constantly it's like society and filmmaking and and storytelling and music and painting and everything says take the moral responsibility for leadership like go make something you can be anything you want but and then as soon as we do most of society and your peers and everyone's like let's find a way to tear that down and so we just seek things that we can pity and validate that and then we just envy things that we that we that we can't pity and we just want to tear them down and it's constant and it's psychologically induced and it f sows division and it benefits those in power who are making billions and millions and millions and millions and millions of, of dollars off of our psychological self-imposed torture it's prison that's that's the only way to put it and i i think especially this this okay back to the smash brothers thing like saying boobs or talking about boobs or looking at boobs or even having just honest 
representations of the original artist's intention in the original character in the original video game is somehow wrong or immoral or just base object objectification for women because there's a case to be made about objectifying women but this but just representing characters in different art styles and in ways that you know are sexualized but their sex is sex is all around us we're repressing sexual energy like some sort of puritanical like uh we talked about this in the crucible i mean this is mccarthyism it's like it's like we're policing people's sexuality and like it weighs i mean you know all these people who are uh, getting called out for promiscuity it's like what didn't we haven't we been talking about that and seeing that and like friends and like fresh prince of bel-air and like the george lopez show like all these television shows that everybody watched like that promiscuity is just it's like i mean it's in media right now it's like constant yeah and now we're so it's like this paradigm is set for young women where it's like all your sexual experiences either contribute to the narrative of rape culture or you're a slut and we're slut shaming like more than we did in the 1600s so all these kids are just going around worm like being like i have all these feelings and i just want to come but never but i'll get yelled at if i come so i can't come and mommy and daddy are gonna catch me coming and i just want to get i just want to kill i just want to kill something and that's what's happening and how do we you know how do we mitigate the damage well i don't know maybe we just all get off social media and i, I don't I, you know is it about solutions really or is it about telling the story of what's going on individually isn't storytelling usually the best way to handle anything like this we have to tell our stories and how do we tell the stories if only certain stories are being validated by the sort of zeitgeist narrative that's the problem it's um you know it's really it's a it's a hard thing to wrap one's head around honestly and that's why we need communication and community and there's so many great things about the internet there's so many great things about the internet but this mob like energy that's used to suppress and outcast people is so dark and so wrong and it's so everybody knows but everyone's afraid to speak up about it or they or the people and it's hilarious because the people who try to invalidate what's going on end up suffering the effects from what's going on i mean that's happening constantly with the new york times it's been happening uh, you know habitually it's um it's insipid to the degree in which people are eating their own and using the same arbitrary narratives against each other whenever it validates their preconceived bias it's really like it's 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 poisonous and it's and it's so evident it's so obvious and the way we all have to just work within these stealth ways to communicate to each other like it's like it's like i mean have we not have we not cracked a history book like this is we're literally in the seventh book of harry potter like i mean that's not well history sometimes you know fiction is more of history than actual history because this is i mean arguments we made that history is just storytelling from a sort of point of view which is sometimes fiction can be more truthful than than non-fiction you know numbers are ultimately fiction but numbers can be proved so storytelling can be proved too based upon the behavior and the pathology of what's going on we can look at this throughout history like if we have to Operate, if truth is operating from the shadows and there is a fixed narrative or these things are being pushed, these principles like the Scientology tenets, like if it's true for you, then it's true. And if it's not true for you, it's not true. And like that being enforced upon people instead of seeking an objective tr truth that exists in a gray area and like critically thinking to find that. It's like, nope, just it doesn't matter what happened. It's how I felt. And that's reality. And you have to accept that narrative or you're the enemy. And if you dissent from that, I'm going to vitriolically like tear you apart and set take all my resources and set the dogs on you in any way I can because you've broken my cognitive dissonant sort of bullshit layer with truth and that can't stand so I'm going to attack you viciously until that's that hole is who that hole's just we just plug that hole up like a dam and um now I don't have to deal with it anymore <laughs> and it's great and I'll just send my kids to daycare and I'll just uh, batter my husband and I'll be uh the winner and that's not I'm not saying that that's that's a good example of what's happening though like people are unconsciously tearing people apart and willfully enacting harm in their circumstances and they're just like looking for any excuse to justify their behavior constantly and it's so wrong. And it's just I'm just saying the people who are usually seeking sympathy for their victimhood are usually bullshitting about how bad it is for them. Just be like I mean that's the, the most hilarious part of that is it's diluting the experience of people who actually go through something or actually deal with some sort of disability or impairment by saying by by just hyperbolizing any small difficulty in their life or any you know maybe it's serious but they just expand it to the degree that they are impaired by it and they're performing constantly for and they're looking to seek it's like they, the reason why they share their woeful victimhood so much is because they're seeking to validate it. 
by the by the group think like if the collective validates that i'm a victim then yeah i've convinced them and then i can be a victim and ha i will abscond from any responsibility like i've wanted and it's a it's like an addict brain it's like just looking for these workarounds to get the fix of like hey did you did you, did you buy my bullshit great i can i can i don't have to be anything today because i'm this this is my identity this victim and it's like yo usually the people who are struggling the most are the mo- like seeking to overcome that like if you get a wheelchair you're trying to appear as normal as possible you're not trying to l- hey everybody look at me in the fucking wheelchair like those are the worst type of paraplegics the ones who are screaming for attention all the time like that's what we've all become and that's sort of leading the mentally ill community what a dis- what a disgrace what a what a shameful disgrace and it's so- and it's so awful because the disabled community suffers the highest levels of sexual violence and like wrongful imprisonment and um, suicide. It's just horrible, especially what's been happening during the during the pandemic. And the people who represent the mentally ill community are people who are a little anxious or a little or a little depressed. It's so it, it, who who's probably could fix circumstances in their life. Like God, if somebody if I could enter the brain of someone who's had surmountable circumstances like if they didn't have some sort of mental illness like they're just fat or they're just lazy or they're just in a toxic sort of continuum like and they could take proactive action to break that god i would to one day to live to walk in those shoes you know and i know a large part of the disabled community feels the same way like one day to just have things just fine and like deal with the problems ahead of us to not have these huge factors outside of our control be constantly influencing uh, influencing us like that's it's hell to be in and these people just like seek the affirmation of living in hell without actually living in hell and it's so wrong it's such a problem and it's all connected to the smash brother stuff like don't get like that's seriously they're seeking drama to validate their own shitty mediocre circumstances and they're just like seeking a reason for it's so sad and um you know i don't think it's tenable but we all have to sort of talk about it that's basically what it is you have to talk about it um and it's not funny i mean it's not like that's like it's really it's really horrible you know and as soon as we start you know changing the narrative and sharing ideas that really form an honest social fabric this stuff will crumble because it has no legitimacy like there's really no base foundation to the to these people's bullshit is performative bullshit for attention like a bad kid who's never been parented properly but you know look at that that's what it does all kind of start in the family. You know, it's like conservatives say that all the time. And it's like, oh, they're kind of right. And there's no way. And it's like, uh, you know, looking at it from the middle, it's like, yeah, they're kind of right. Like, how have we bastardized parenting so much or shame? Like, oh, oh, a nuclear family is now white privilege. It's like, or, you know, I feel like Denzel Washington, like he's talked about keeping a nuclear family and like family values and all this stuff. Like literally fences is about that. And like, don't make the same mistakes. And like, his all of his kids have graduated high school and gone to college. Like, he's the, like he really has a testament to being a good dad and his wife. And he really gives a lot of credit to his wife. And he's a good father. Like, I don't know. Shouldn't we strive for that? Shouldn't we strive for leadership instead of tearing it down? It's so maddening. I think it's really simple, though. I think that's people are afraid of the simplest things. Like, oh, I just have to take responsibility, and it's not the system's fault; it's my fault. Oh God! But people instead, people will just choose the next fist and fix immediate gratification. Who could blame them? That's what technology has done. What social media has done. What our friendships being so such arrangements have done. It's such just throw it away, just block it, just fix it. You know, okay. Instead of facing the major issue and going where I don't want to go and really finding breath and freedom through that, I'm going to repeat this continuum that makes me feel comfortable until it eats me alive, literally kills me, gives me cancer, whatever, because it, it, I'm putting all, I'm creating long-term consequences by putting off short-term consequences. And that's what everything has told me to do because I'm not special. And I realized that instead of going and making some, taking all that time that they spend absconding from responsibility and, and performing their victimhood because it takes energy, you know, and they get a release from it. They get like, it's a fix. It's an addiction. You know, even if they do use substances to assist in that, which a lot of them do, or, you know, pharmaceuticals that are just falsely diagnosed that they haven't actually gone through a, you know, go to a psychologist and gotten a DSM five, DSM five, like diagnostic diagnosis. You know what I mean? They, they just gone to a physician. And they're like, you have symptoms of this. And like given serious drugs, like Ambilify, or, you know, uh, Wellbutrin, you know, which is it's just my point is, is it destroys people and it, and it gives them a reason to just attack people online just because they're mad at their own circumstances and they're repressing something. And I think it's patently obvious and I think it's not tenable and we're all going to get through this and we all just have to keep talking about it and telling our stories and telling good stories and telling the truth. It's all about telling the truth. We just have to do that. And that's that's it. You know, that's really it. So, yeah. OK, we'll do it proactive action okay we gotta tell the truth